Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to logging GPS data to an SD card with Arduino. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. If you like what you see in this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's get started. Let's first talk about the hardware we're gonna use for this tutorial. So for the GPS module, I'm gonna be using the Neo 7M from Ublox, which is a GPS chip or I should say system on a chip. Now Ublox makes a couple different families of these chips. The Neo 6 was the first. I'm using the Neo 7, they have the Neo 8. This tutorial should work. The code I'm gonna show should work for all of these generations. Uh, but once again, I'm only gonna test it on the Neo 7. And I'm using this development board that I got from uh, AliExpress for the Neo 7. As long as you have a Neo 7 on a board that has a UART connection, then this tutorial should work for you. For the SD card, I got this holder from uh, AliExpress as well. They're very low cost. I think I got it for like 50 cents. You know, you can also use, you know, I know Arduino has some shields with SD card holders on it. An important thing to note if you're not already aware is the brains of the SD card is actually on the SD card. So the holder is nothing but a holder with a wiring interface. The SD card actually has a microcontroller and a and memory of course and so when you you can't talk to the holder you only talk to the card something to point out and then for this tutorial both these devices both the neo 7 as well as the sd card are 3.3 volt for power as well as for logic or communication here's something i grabbed from the data sheet for the neo 7m that kind of just shows some of its features Notice they have a they have you know more than one version. They have the 7N and they have the 7M. So actually you can see it connects to more than just GPS. It actually connects to GLONASS, but uh, GPS is what we're gonna be using here. You can see the voltage range up to 3.6. What's nice too is it actually has multiple communication interfaces. Now most development boards out there don't actually use all of these, but here we're gonna be using the UART connection. And then you can see the, the N version actually has more features than the M version. But once again, I'm gonna be using the M version. Here's a little bit on my setup, or I guess a partial schematic. So the SD card is gonna run off of SPI communication and all these pins will be labeled. Uh, if you're using a shield, it should directly go to the SPI pins on that Arduino board. Now here in this picture, I'm, gonna, I'm using the zero. Now the zero actually has a ICSP header. What's different than with the zero than some of the AVR boards is you actually have SPI at this header as well as at pin 13, 12, and 11. For the zero, they just have the SPI communication at this header. So that's what I have it connected to. Once again, if you're using an AVR, I have the pins right up here. Now for the Neo 7, it uses UART, but guess what? It just constantly spits out data. You don't actually have to communicate with it. So I'm just connecting the transmit pin to the receive pin of my hardware serial port. Now, important thing to note, the Arduino Zero has multiple serial ports. The programming port is a serial port as well as digital pin zero and one. So I can actually program it without worrying about having this connected to it. Now, if you're using an, an AVR Arduino, you wanna make sure you unplug this pin when you do your programming or you'll get a, an error when you try to upload the sketch. And I'll just mention as a reminder, if you have a five volt Arduino, you need to use level shifters because these are, you know, the S SPI interface on the SD micro card is 3.3 volts. For the GPS module, it doesn't matter because you're just really using the, the transmit. You're not actually communicating to it. So here's a picture of my setup just for reference. You know, here's my zero board. And I will mention, I tested this code with a zero as well as a Pro Mini, which is a 3.3 volt AVR based Arduino. So I did test it with both. I do have to change a couple parts of the code to use it for AVR, but I'll point those out when I show the code. But anyway, this is the connection. You can see I just have one communication pin for the GPS. I have my pins from the SD card. Here's the micro SD card going to my spy header. And then I'm using 3.3 volts for powering everything. Okay, and before we get to the code, I think it's important to understand that 
all GPS chips, I shouldn't say all, most GPS chips abide by this NEMA standard or National Marine Electronics Association. What they did is they said, you know what, we have all these GPS modules coming out. Let's have them all speak the same language. So they made this great standard and most GPS modules that I've seen follow it. And how this standard works is basically the module will print out or the module will communicate out these sentences and the sentence will begin with a dollar sign GP for GPS, I guess, and then a heading for the sentence. So this one I'm going to use is RMC and each heading means it's going to communicate different data. So for RMC, it's going to communicate time, position, velocity, date, things like that. And you could actually see an example. So it'll throw out this sentence on the serial line. You look for this header and then you know the next data that's going to come. And you can see here's a description of each part of the data. And so the idea is you read this in and you parse through it. Now I'll mention that there's a lot of different sentences and you can actually see here's a picture of a serial port where they just print out all the different sentences. This one actually doesn't print out a lot of data compared to some of these others. But I will mention for, for this example, I'm only going to be reading this sentence in. I'm not going to be reading all these other sentences and that's, that's what my code is set up to do. If you want more information on these different sentences, you can go to this website right here. Okay, I just wanted to give you a background on sort of a standard interface that you can expect in GPS modules. Now that we have that, we have the hardware set up, let's take a look at the code. Okay, here we are at the code and what I did is I created a simple library for the GPS communication and you can see since I have quotation marks, that means I have it locally in the folder. So here's, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the library, but so I'm calling my library. I call spy communication library because I need it for the SD card and then Arduino already has a nice SD card library for getting data from the SD card or putting it on the SD card. So here's some of my setup variables. I basically declare a chip select pin and maybe I didn't mention that when I showed the, the picture. You know you have your spy connections but you also have a chip select pin and I set this to digital pin 10. I then, when I log my data to the SD card, I'm actually going to log it in a CSV file, which you can open as a spreadsheet in any spreadsheet program like the popular Microsoft Excel. And so what I want to do is I want to create labels for my spreadsheet for the data. And so CSV stands basically for comma separated, I don't know if it's variables or what, but anyway, comma separated something. And so you can see I have a comma between those. And what the comma does is when you open it up with a spreadsheet, they know to put these in different cells. So here's all my headings for the data I'm going to read. The next string is for the name of the file. So I just call it W data and the W is actually for win data because I'm using this for recording win. So W data is the name and I will remind you, or I shouldn't say remind you, for SD cards, for the file formats, they follow this 8.3 rule. So it means you can't have more than eight digits in the name and you can't have more than three digits for the file type. Here I declare the library. I probably should have put some comments there, but this is my library I'm calling. I call it Neo7M and I, I name the object Neo. Then here is my setup code. So first what I do is I check for the SD card and if it's not there, I just return. If it is there, what I do next is I check to see if the name of the file already exists. And I'll show this when I show my an example of some of the files. So in an SD card, you can have multiple files. Well, if I don't want to keep logging to the same file, what I do is I say check to see if wdata.csv exists. And that's what I do by this sd.exists. If it does, I up my count variable and then I add that to the string. So now I have wdata1 and I check if that exists. And I keep looping until I find a new version that doesn't exist and then I create that file. Once I do that, I write my headings. So basically I create this other file object. So I have my SD object and I have my file object. I then open the file name, the new file name. It might be SD, it might be, excuse me, WData, it might be WData1, it might be WData20. 
I then write my labels to the file. I then close it. I then print, oh, I should say, I then close it. If there was an error, I just basically print a message to the serial, serial monitor. Here's my main loop. I'll delay for two seconds. And then what I'm gonna do is grab the GPS data and write it to the SD card. So here is my main function for getting the GPS data. So neo.get NEMA data. And what I do is I feed in the serial object. Now, I need to point this out. I last used this with the Pro Mini. So I, I feed in the hardware serial port serial. If when I was using the zero though, I feed in serial one because that's the serial port that corresponds to D0 and D1. When I post this code to GitHub, I'm gonna have it configured for the Arduino Zero. So I'm just gonna warn you, this is something you'll need to change to work with, with different Arduinos. So once I do that, I checked, basically this is gonna get, read the data from the GPS module and I'll show you the code in the library. Once it does that, it stores it in an array that's in the library. If it fails, I just print and let you know. And then if it doesn't, I go here. And we do a similar thing that we did in the setup code. We create a data file or a file object. We open up the file name, and then we basically do a for loop, and I'm calling the array from the library, neo.nema, and then I read through the array. Now, I actually don't print out all the, the parameters that were read from the, uh, from the sentence, I think it reads, I think it gets 15 pieces of data. One of them is actually a, you know, a, C a CRC check. But I, I just, I'm just interested in the first nine out to the date. So that's what I, that's what I do, that's what I print out. And the reason I have an if statement here is I print these out, once again, comma separable, comma separated data for the CSV file. That's why I have, I add the comma. And then for the last one, I print line to go to the next uh, row in the spreadsheet. I then close the file. I then open up a serial port and you can add, you can leave this in if you want, but this just is gonna print out the raw data to the serial port so you can see it. Once again, using that same array from the library. I then end the serial. Notice that I use serial end a lot. The reason is, is because the library itself is using UART. And what I want to, don't want to do is mix up different serial communications because they use interrupts and it can make funky things happen. So that's why you see me use serial begin and serial end a lot. And then if the file failed to open, I just print it out to you, the user, so you know. So that's the main sketch. Now let's take a look at the library. And I'm going to, I'm going to post this to GitHub and I'll have a link in the description of the video. So here's the .h file. I just give a brief overview of the library. I, I kind of share some of the NEMA characteristics because once again, all this library does is read in the RMC sentence in NEMA. It doesn't read in every type of sentence. I also want to mention that I leverage some of this code in this library from a tutorial by uh, David Watts, who has a great YouTube channel. He did a tutorial related to the Neo 6M. So I did leverage a little bit that of that code from his video and turn it into a library. Uh, here's a link to his video if you wanna check it out. Okay, I'm not gonna go through the .h file much just to show you that here's that main function I told you about and we call in the hardware serial port. Here's the, the array and then I just have two private functions that basically what when you get the latitude and longitude from the GPS module, it's not in a very readable form. So these functions just convert it into a better readable form. So here's the .cpp file. And what I'm doing here, oh, here's another thing I wanna point out. This line of code needs to be added for the zero. And it's a little confusing because it says AVR. If you have an AVR of Arduino, it automatically pulls in this library. If you have a zero though, it does it. And we need this library for reading in the GPS data. Here's my constructor, my destructor, and here's the main function. So this takes in the serial port. It starts the serial. It basically looks for data. Once it, there's data, once again, this is gonna be from the GPS module, it reads it. Then we search through that, that buffer to find the sentence heading, the RMC. 
Once we do, we can then parse through, and that's all I'm doing here is parsing through that data. And then what I do is I convert the latitude and longitude data into an easier read form. This is the NEMA array that we call in the main sketch. You know, if it works, I set this to true and return true. And there we go. And then this is just, I'm not gonna go through these, but these are the functions for converting latitude and longitude to an easier to read form. Okay, that's the code. I will post it on GitHub and also I'll have the main sketch on my blog. Here I wanted to show you some of the data in, in a spreadsheet. And so we can see the time, the time is in UTC. So when I, when I made these measurements, it was 3 a.m. and 55 minutes past 3, 3 a.m. And, and 6 seconds. The A means active. Here's the latitude. Here's the hemisphere. I need to mention about the longitude. I went in here to the spreadsheet and changed the longitude just because I didn't want my exact coordinates of my home on here. So I just, I just pasted in this 100. That was not the real reading. Then here's the hemisphere again. Here's the speed. When I did this, I wasn't moving, so that's why we're seeing no speed. I'm not sure why this came up as a question mark. This may be because it was too small of a number. And same thing for the tracking angle. The tracking angle is, is more of a measurement for when you're moving. And so I think this is blank because you get a long trail of, of, of zeros. And then here is the date. So basically I did this reading on February 8th. 2017. So that's what it's going to print out to in the CSV. So it's a nice way to log. You know, I did this because I want to have a, a device that moves and it's going to be making sensor measurements and I want to record where the time and place that those sensor measurements were made and you can't beat a GPS module for that. Now I will warn you if you start, if you're doing this indoors, the GPS may not connect to all the satellites it needs. And sometimes the GPS takes time to connect to satellites. So if you start logging right away, sometimes some of these fields will be blank. What happens is that if the GPS can get a single satellite right away, it'll give you time data and date data, but it won't have the position and speed data yet. So sometimes if you start logging right away, you'll see the time data show up before you'll see the, the position data show up. And just to show this, here's my folder with my SD card and you can see basically it makes you know wdata.csv and then it'll keep making more as you log more and more data. Okay, that's it for logging GPS data to an SD card with Arduino. If you have any comments or insights to add, please use the comment section on, on below this video. And if you're ever bored, please check out the forstronics.com store. In the next couple of months, I'm going to be adding more and more products, so, so feel free to check that out. Thank you for watching.